Hello, Uniservo back again, and here's kind of a different sort of thing. As some of you know, I am actually in the process of moving. Yes, it's a very long process of getting all the stuff out of my house and to the new place, and uh, it's an awful lot. Those of you who have actually been here, which, yeah, a couple of you guys have been here, uh, no, I've got a lot of stuff here. I've got a, well, not a lot more at home, but probably 60% is still yet to be moved. Uh, I've got a lot more stuff, uh, to move and make videos of. You've only seen a tiny, tiny portion of what I have. So, uh, yeah. It's a, it's a long process. Eventually I'll get around to it. But in any case, I was moving a bunch more stuff and came across this, an old photograph that a friend gave me where he got, I don't know, probably a flea market or something like that. He is an excellent, uh, excellent uh, ferret of stuff. He can go to, I think, just about any flea market or ham fest or whatever and come up with something really interesting. So in any case, he knew uh, that I, knew, I liked old computers, so he gave me this old photograph framed and uh yeah, i'm gonna guess it's gotta be from the late 60s and uh there's no date nor is there any writing on it and uh well it shows a little bit of a uh well what looks like an ibm shop a mainframe shop let's go over this and uh, see what we can figure out from this photograph we have no information, no idea who these guys are, where it is, whatever. No idea. Well, front and center, we've got uh, here is a uh, 2540 punch, card punch and reader. Pretty standard for uh, 360 era devices. And over here is, no doubt, a 1403 printer, most likely an N1 Um most most of these big printers that were more cube shaped that looked like this were were 1403 N1s. I think there may have been a model that uh, was not an N1 that looked like that, but regular 1403s actually stood on well, sort of legs. And over here, and I did look. I know I I know that is incredibly hard to see. It's not enough resolution here. Those are 2311 disc drives. There appear to be three of them. And if you look at that, that looks like head of string because it is a little bit, I don't know, longer. Uh, typically, the head of string had a little extra control electronics. And, uh, well, yeah, it's, it's, that's, that would make logical sense. Now, it's a little weird that it's three drives in a row and not four, but oh well, maybe that's all they could afford. And here, not much to be seen here, except you can read out the tag 2701. 2701 was a communications device. And IBM actually had an awful lot of this stuff, communication devices, to actually allow 360s and 370s to do remote tasks and do very, very crude networking. 2701 was a not a very complex device, uh, but it did allow you to do things like uh, print and, and remote job entry and all like that from far away. Now, what else can we see? There's a box back here. It's pretty featureless. If I were to guess, I would say it's probably a control unit of some sort. Now, there are two choices. It might be. It could be a 2821, which would control the printer, punch, and reader. And I actually have some videos on 2821s because I actually have some 2821s. And uh, go back and look at those if you want. Uh, it might be one of those. Or it could be a 2841, which would be the controller for the disk drives. And I am very much in, in, in pursuit, or not even in pursuit, because I don't know of any out there. 
uh, that are available. A 2841. I'm very much in search of a 2841 control unit. Uh, I actually do have a 2311 drive, and uh, it'd be neat to control it. Now, weirdly, I actually have a Univac clone of a of 2311s and the control unit, but uh, that's a different that's a different kettle of fish. What else can we find out from this uh, this picture? Well, we got a card uh, punch card cabinet. It's interesting. There's only one cabinet here because I you know maybe there are some hidden behind the uh, printer there. Who knows? Uh, you know, maybe those had the uh, job cards and such like that, that were common to, to every system uh, for every job, things they used an awful lot of, who knows? In the back, we can sort of see a tape library. It's a little hard to tell. Um, we have a blackboard here. It's a little hard to read, but there is some stuff about HASP, H-A-S-P. That was a uh, kind of an add-on for the uh, System 360 operating system that added a whole bunch of different features for remote job entry. That's RJE and uh, spooling and all sorts of scheduling stuff. And uh, yeah, HASP was a pretty pretty important uh, add-on. It was not really IBM. It was actually done sort of by contractors of IBM. Um, let's see, what else can we see here? What I find interesting are these things. These racks that are hanging off of the 2311s. Now, of course, these 2311s, and obviously this is a staged photo because, you know, we've got three guys doing stuff, stuff at once. And, you know, this guy's got a little bit of the deer caught in headlights look there. Um... <laughs> Uh, obviously a stage photo, but here this guy is either mounting or dismounting a disc pack. And of course, those old disc packs had uh, sort of a, a plastic lid that uh, covered the pack when not in use, when it was not in the drive and working. And uh, obviously for keeping the dust out and such like that, keeping fingers out and such like that. Well, you had to, had to do something with it. When it was in the drive. So I've never seen these before. Apparently someone, I don't think it was IBM because I've never seen one of these in a catalog. Although, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, probably third party. But this is interesting. They're, they're, they're hangers that you hung off of the front panel of the disk drive that let you put a uh, just kind of a place to stick the, pa the, to stick the uh, cover. Pretty handy. You know, a little ugly, but it got the job done. Um, interesting. Yeah, it's I've never seen that. Oh, and incidentally, you can kind of see a disc pack cover right here, too. Yeah, I don't know what's going on there. There's nothing that says disc drive back there, but it's hard to say. You know, this is obviously just a portion of the shop. Um, the actual processor is... Not in the picture, obviously. This this may only be a quarter or an eighth or a twelfth of the, the entire shop. Who knows? Um, yeah. i uh, got some other, other stuff here. Who knows? Uh, probably a raised floor. You can see uh, the, the cutout there. However, these cords are interesting. I don't know what those are. Those are very likely not the uh, power cords for these devices because the power cords for these devices are big. I mean, uh, we're talking probably an inch in diameter for some of these guys here. They kind of overdid it. IBM kind of overdid it as far as the, the cords. These these look like, <laughs> that, that looks like just an extension cord to something. Uh, you know, a little box there. Yeah, you know... You could probably run a 1403 or a 2540 off of a cord that small, but you know, let's face it, you know, they didn't do that because these things, these machines had cords wired in that were much bigger. They typically had Russell and Stoll connectors on the end. 
And, you know, it, that is not a Russell install. You know, a Russell install is a gigantic AC connector you could kill a man with. <laughs> that looks like just a, something you pick up at Ace Hardware. Anyway, yeah. So, uh, interesting picture. I have no idea where this is from, but uh, kind of shows uh, what a real data center sort of looked like. Uh, yeah, like I said, staged, yeah, sure. But... You know, so often we see with this 60s and 70s stuff, we see pictures of data centers that are not entirely true to form. Like if you go to the IBM site, a lot of those were uh, pictures of the, of the big machines were so-called so white room photos. And they were basically just, well, look at them. They don't even look like a room. It just looks like you know, a big white room, like, like, like the prison from THX 1138, where there, it's featureless, except there's this big computer sitting there. Well, this is obviously the real thing. Where it is, who knows? When it is, eh, probably late 60s. Where it is, who knows? Who knows? No writing. No writing on the back of this photo anyway. So, okay, well, kind of an interesting uh, look at a vintage photograph that's been kicking around. Uh, I don't know if I have any more of these. You know, it's, it's, I might. Let me know if you want to see more of them, if I do come across them, this little analysis of vintage computer rooms. Um, I find them fascinating. Maybe you do too. Who knows? Leave a like if you do. All right, well, I'll go through the standard stuff that YouTubers are supposed to say. Like, subscribe, share. Or you can dislike it if you want to. Either way. Anyway, <laughs> uh, I shall talk to you later. Bye-bye.